Hello, and welcome to another Arizona Hip Historian Virtual Happy Hour Tour. I am Brenda Holt with AARP Arizona. We are the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that is dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. And with a nationwide presence of nearly 38 million members across the nation and over 900,000 right here in Arizona, we work to strengthen communities and we advocate for what matters most to families, such as health security, financial stability, and personal fulfillment, to name a few. During the months of May and June, we will focus on healthy living and amplify the call to action for the 50-plus community to develop healthy habits for mental well-being. As the country continues to grapple with the ebbs and flows of the COVID-19 pandemic, many are eager to move into a sense of normalcy. Many in the 50-plus community have developed coping mechanisms that show a strong sense of resiliency and the need to anchor themselves. Ongoing public health concerns, economic issues, and global conflicts are still weighing on older adults. By covering topics like sleep, stress management, healthy eating, and exercise, AARP demonstrates that its healthy living offerings can help Americans develop and maintain healthy habits for their mental well-being. Visit us for resources and information at www.aarp.org backslash mental health or at www.aarp.org backslash Arizona. Thank you for attending tonight's session. Have a good evening. Hello, good evening. I want to welcome you all to Arizona History Happy Hour. I am so happy that you can join us tonight as we get ready for an hour or so of just a romp through some Arizona history. So thank you all so much for being here. And so today is... June 2nd, which for Arizona has an interesting connotation. Um, So it is back in 1976, um, on June 2nd, Don Bowles, who was a reporter for the Arizona Republic, um, an investigative reporter, he was researching horse racing, mafia, and land scams, went to the Claren Hotel on this date, And as that meeting didn't happen, he went back out to his car and it blew up. Um, That moment, um, gosh, it was, I think, kind of the moment where, I mean, people keep talking about it's kind of the moment where Phoenix and Arizona kind of realized it was not the wholesome place that it had kind of made out to be. That there was indeed this underbelly going on. Um, So... Don Bowles, I mean, his name still lives on. The case is still unsolved. People did go to prison. Um, People were convicted, but it is still considered to be an unsolved case. Back in 1924, the Indian Citizenship Act, Act was granted by Congress. And so from that point on, all American born Indians were citizens of the U.S., kind of shocked it took that long i didn't realize that so but you know i always like to end on a sweet note so we're going to talk about mr dryer who you know decided that he was making ice cream and he decided that his wife had these great fabric scissors so he cut up nuts and marshmallows with those scissors and that made rocky road ice cream 
So I wonder if she ever let him touch those scissors again for anything else other than textiles. I know I wouldn't be very happy about that at all. So what can you expect tonight? Well, you know, we're going to have an amazing special guest on in just a few minutes. We always talk about a little town in Arizona. We do some trivia. We talk about some Arizona music, as well as From the Vault, which is something that's in plain sight that has a really interesting story, as well as there's a beverage. So if this is your first time here, you might be wondering, who is that man and why is he on my screen? Well, my name is Marshall Shore. I moved here a little over 22 years ago from Brooklyn, where I was a librarian in a beautiful Carnegie building, trading that for a 1950s library in South Phoenix, which the building no longer stands. Now they have a beautiful, much newer building for the community. But there was a rich oral tradition of the community. And that really kind of influenced in terms of what I'm doing today, because it really kind of got me thinking about the modern history and sharing that around. And promptly moved, after we moved to Arizona, we moved into a beautiful 1956 ranch that was oh so many tones of beige. I am happy to say now it is seafoam and cantaloupe, just two shades. And there's what my kitchen looks like today. All that mahogany veered cabinetry original. All that tile, all those appliances, all original to the house. Now, as soon as I got here, all I kept hearing about how there was no history here. But I knew that wasn't true because every time I went somewhere, whether it was on foot, on bike, in a car, I came across so many amazing people, places, and stories. And then there's that post-war boom that I like to say always made the Arizona that we all know and love today. All those GIs that were stationed here, trained here, or passed through on the way to somewhere else, they were moving back here for a whole new way of life. And that is what they got. Now, I'm also called the hip historian, which means I get to have lots of fun with Arizona history. Why, just this weekend, I'm going down to Bisbee for an arts takeover, kind of Burning Man style takeover of Bisbee, which is going to be a lot of fun. We're doing a couple different events down there, all based on Arizona history, since most of the folks attending know very little about Bisbee or Arizona. So that should be a fun time. Um, also coming up in just a few weeks, actually, I think next week I'm doing for Phoenix Library, we are doing an LGBTQ history in Arizona. And then I know, I think later in the month, maybe July or July, I'm not sure which, um, we are doing Disney in Arizona because that's become one of my current obsessions is trying to track down more Walt Disney. What did he do here? Now, I see some of you have found the chat. You are always welcome to throw anything in there. But, you know, you can also reach out and to me on Facebook, Instagram, email, or even through my website. And so I always love to give a shout out to PJ, my cocktail advisor. And so when I realized, you know, you can't really let's actually, you know, I'm going to pop off my screen for a moment so you can see my full green screen. So Arizona 88, which we're actually going to talk a little bit about later. That state highway. No, actually I can do. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay. Well, you know, you click on a button and there you go. So anyway, so PJ um, works for a variety of places doing all kinds of fun cocktail work. And so we are doing an espresso martini and so you can get one of these at Hanny's or AZ88s. And so this espresso martini is a little bit of AD, AZ distilling mission vodka, Kahlua, Bailey's, espresso, and cream de cacao. Oh, oh, that would make a really good ice cream. Coming up for the summer, that would be quite lovely. And now it's time for a little Arizona. So I talk about being from New York, but you know, I really grew up in a small Midwest town of about 25 people. 
and then probably move to New York City. So I like to talk about little towns, and indeed, that's what we're doing. We are talking about a town today that has a population of six. Established back in 1904, it is Tortilla Flats. And so Tortilla Flat um, originally would have been a grassy valley in the Superstition Mountains with a creek and a flat that lay between the mountains and the Salt River Valley. And so indigenous communities created a kind of trail that was called the Yavapai or Tonto Trail that has also been named the Apache Trail. And so that became Arizona 88. Now, if you go visit Tortilla Flats, you can get out there. Um, you'll take the 60 to Apache Junction and then wind up on 88. Um, that was originally designed the road to get the workers to and from Roosevelt Dam as it was being built. Um, originally said it was a camp for miners. It then went on. And there's what it looks like today. It's just a fun spot to go hang out. Um, either a day trip, you can camp out there as well. And if you go, there is the bar that is said to be opened originally by Jacob Waltz as one of the founders of the restaurant, who is the Lost Dutchman. Also, you have to go right by Canyon Lake. And so one of the things on my Arizona list to do is the Dolly Steamboat to be able to go through and take a tour of Canyon Lake. All right. So now we get to talk to our special guest. And I'm so excited to bring on my friend Todd. Hello, Hi. Todd. Hey. How's, How's it going? Oh, my gosh. So good. Having a great <laughs> night so far. I've got a really tasty beverage. I heard that it has Bailey's in it. It does. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Just like my last name. In... Smooth, brown, and sweet like my love. <laughs> oh wow for doing that this early who knows where we're gonna be by the end of right it. Oh, i'm so lyrics here <laughs> how you doing it's a great to be here i love your show i love what you do i you am so this. happy that we're able to do this oh my gosh because you know i mean every time we get together we, we cook up all these plans and so <laughs> yes <laughs> which is so much fun and so so for tonight, we've created a little bit of trivia. So people that don't know a lot about who Todd Bailey is, I mean, I know you have a lot of fans out there, <laughs> but you know, they <laughs> may not know everything about Todd. And I have a feeling tonight, they're going to learn a lot more about Todd Bailey. So Lower your voice. Indeed, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with our trivia, it's a little bit different than most like bar trivia, because what will happen is every question is not fill in the blank. Your answer is already on screen. So all you got to do is just pick the right one or the wrong one. But the goal is to have fun. And we're going to share some great stories. Yay! All right. So let's go ahead and launch into question one. So... So like Ted DeGrazia, Ted has a passion for A, painting, B, singing, C, powerlifting, or D, yodeling. So which one of those do you think Ted DeGrazia and Todd share? I'm thinking yodeling. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> I won't you, do it. As you as you grab your little dirndl and put it on, so that way you can get ready to watch Sound of Music and <laughs> sing along. I yodel Prince songs. <laughs> I would pay to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, question two: Which talent competition show? Hosted by Ed McMahon, did Todd compete on? 
Was it A, America's Got Talent? B, Star Search? C, Dance Fever with Danny Terrio? Or D, Dancing with the Stars? So which one of those competition shows do you think Todd was on? Or all of them. Uh, that's right. I guess I should have added all of the above because you never know. I mean, there it could be a trick question. It wouldn't be the first time we've had a trick question on here. <laughs> and so question three, what Mesa High School opened its doors back in 1981? That was an awfully long time ago. So was it A, Westwood, B, Skyline, C, Mesa, or D, Dobson? So what Mesa High School opened its doors back in 1981? And true or false, Troubadour Cafe is a restaurant owned by Todd's family. Is that true or false? And would they or do they serve an espresso martini with an extra shot of Bailey's? All right, question five. We're at that midway point. Todd was crowned a cotton queen. Oh, cotton king, sorry. B, male entertainer of the year. C, Butter King, or D, Mr. Dance of Arizona. So which one of those titles do you think Todd was bestowed? Maybe even had a sash. Maybe even had a crown. We'll find out in just a bit. All right, Todd's mom is Dorothy, Kathy, or Joyce, and she is known as... A, Dancing Dorothy, or B, Joyce the Voice, C, Yodeling Yolinda, oh, or Bell the Bell Ringer. Wow, yodeling and bell ringing. What a diverse family you have. <laughs> we do stuff. <laughs> I like that. We do stuff. <laughs> All right, question seven. What museum is near Papago Park? A, the Museum of Indigenous Peoples. B, the River of Time Museum. C, the Hall of Flame. Or D, the Arizona Heritage Museum. So which one of those museums is near Papago Park? Which iconic Valley restaurant opened its doors back in 1988? And you might see an 88 theme running through. So is the answer A, Durant's, B, AZ88, C, Mary Coyle, or D, The Marble Club? All right. So moving on because, you know, one of those iconic restaurants opened its doors back in 1988. Which casino was Jewish mobster Gus Greenbaum not involved with? Was it A, the Flamingo, B, Tropicana, C, the MGM Grand, or D, the Riviera? All right. Question 10 and our final question. Which celebrities has Todd worked with? A, Tony Bennett, B, Quincy Jones, C, Phil Collins, D, Sheila E, or E, uh, or E, all of the above. I just realized it was Sheila E, or E, all of the above. <laughs> I was like, E, 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 E. <laughs> all right. While you're all locking in your final answers and it's not correcting my spelling of yodeling. <laughs> <laughs> So we are going to go on and do a little bit of Arizona music, but because of Todd, and as you'll find out, he's very involved with dance. We're going to talk about Angel Walker, um, who passed away a couple years ago. Um, she was a burlesque performer called Satan's Angel. 
She would have been an A-list performer. I'm a headliner in Vegas across the country in the 60s. And her career kind of died down. She wound up moving to Arizona where she met Terry Earp. And they became friends. And so Terry Earp wrote a play about Satan's angel. And that revived her career. And so she was literally performing for, in the 2000s, literally right up through 19 or 2019. She was still performing on stage. Um, and there is also a movie that kind of chronicles her career um, called Satan's Angel. Queen of the Fire Tassels. That was her claim to fame is she would take her tassels and dip them in a martini, light them on fire and get them to spin. Well, that's just a regular Saturday night for you or I. Well, exactly. But, you know, she, I think she actually wound up. I want to say she got to the point where she did like 20 different places for tassels. Wow. That's so, a lot of twirling. That's a lot of twirling. And she was an amazing performer. And so I was so lucky to get a chance to sit down and chat with her. And um, she is also in the Burlesque Hall of Fame up in Vegas. Fantastic. So, indeed. So I just thought it was great that a little bit of dance history. Yes, and people may have taken a class from me at Abby Bella Dance Studio called Bombshell Burlesque. For a while, I taught that for a while. Oh. If you passed through my class, we had a lot of fun. Before all of these heels classes, I was already doing it. Indeed, very good. All right, so now we're ready for some magic and fun. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, like Ted DeGrazia, Ted has a pa or Todd has a passion for painting. Yay! Indeed. So, tell us about your painting. I mean, it's not, it's not small. No, actually, what's crazy about... Uh, I almost have to give away another question if I really go, went in depth. But those paintings, I, I put those, my friend made the canvas and I was saving them for the perfect time to paint. And instead of the stressed moment I was going through at that moment, but you know, I ended up like doing those paintings in like a week. I think I even picked up cigarettes again for, for about seven days while I painted because I was so OCD that I literally finished these paintings in about seven days. And they're called The Herd, as you see, the headphones and everything. They were so much fun and they've been purchased and they're in a beautiful home. Um, that's what I do right there. I get lost in it and there's no better way of being in the moment than just picking up a paintbrush. And it's something that's been there my whole life. Um, well, and I know it's like, well, and I know you also recently started to, I mean, kind of picked up a brush again, doing some more painting True. and even creating some body art for yourself. I did. I, I, oh, let's see. I don't know if it looked very good. On, it's a Medusa. Oh, yeah. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's actually from that painting. Very cool. One of them. It's so much fun. And I'm turning 55 on June 10th. I'm a Gemini. And so I decided to get a new tattoo. And that's something everyone does at 55. But there you go. But you're not everyone, Todd. I'm not everyone. God forbid. <laughs> In Indeed. <laughs> All right, so question two. Which talent competition show hosted by Ed McMahon did Todd compete on? <laughs> and it was Star Search. Oh, I realized I covered up the <laughs> I covered up the, the answer. <laughs> well, I mean, you can tell by the frame there. Well, exactly. If you, if you were around, you know what those stars are indeed <laughs> so tell us a little about that experience so what was okay so bill sanchez sherry kush and i 
all were, uh, you know, we grew up dancing at Tempe Dance Academy, the best dance studio in the whole state. It really is still to this day, pushing out amazing performers. And um, back then, this was like, I think it was 1988. Yes, it was 1988. There was a club called Zazu's, as you might remember, up on Camelback, I believe it was, and they had a competition, you know, I guess we must have heard about it on the radio. I guess you heard about things those days. There's a dance competition, almost like a movie, like an 80s movie. There's a dance competition. The winner gets to go to Los Angeles and be on TV, you know, in this show. So Sherry, Kush, and I, and Bill and I all went, and, you know, we were dancing together every day for years. So just, we worked the chemistry, was brilliant. Uh, we knew each other very well. And we went and auditioned in this club. I think that we were probably, I think maybe I was underage, <laughs> slightly underage. And Sherry definitely was. But you know, these were the 80s. I can't explain it to you. We went in and won and, and did this competition and got called by Star, Star Search about two weeks later and were asked to put together couple routines they fly you to Los Angeles and you compete for uh you know big money in the end of course lots of famous people coming through Star Search Britney Spears Whitney Houston lots of people so it was an iconic show and it was great to be a part of it I was on with two different groups I never won but it was amazing especially 21 years old getting a free trip to LA they pay you, you meet other dancers. And, you know, this was a, it was just a special, special time in life that I really love looking back on. Indeed. And I think let's see if I can get that clip to play. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you still remember the routine. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were rehearsed. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that's the just. Fun, fun. So, wow. I mean, I can only imagine what what an amazing adventure that would have been. I mean, at the age of 21 to be national TV. I, I don't mean, think it even really registered, to be honest. No, I, I would believe that, that it so wouldn't. Now, I mean, right. You know, and when you're young, you're just looking forward. Like, okay, I'm going to do this now and I'm going to do this next after that. So you're not really, really, it's not sinking in like, oh, wow, this is really big platform, you know, at the moment, bigger than it would have been even today because there wasn't all this cable. and Right. There weren't so many op options. So it right. was like everybody was watching it. Everyone was watching. Good Very times. cool. All right. So what makes a high school open its doors in 1981? Dobson. DHS Mustangs. What was so great about Dobson is, um, can you go back to that picture for a second there? Of course. So this was 
back before any other high school ever really like had a dance company and we had a studio actually built like between the, the, um, the gyms and the locker rooms and the basketball court, they built this beautiful dance studio for us, you know, and we had uh, Margie Romero, who's now Margie Romero Wolf, who danced with the Desert Dance Theater here. She's royalty here in Arizona. And there she is up in the upper left hand corner. She still looks exactly like that. And she was just an amazing teacher and nurturer and um, definitely like one of those dance teachers that keeps it real for you. We had to audition our, our pieces and not everybody, not every number was gonna you know, be accepted into the concert. You know, so don't choose a pop song because there's not, we're not filling it with pop music. And, you know, so you would choose to, you know, work on something else, venture into a different style of dance possibly. And uh, that was a great experience. Uh, and actually that would have been real. I think it would have been really cool also at that time as you're kind of developing as an artist to be like, yeah. okay, get out of your comfort zone. You're not gonna dance to what you listen to every day. Exactly. And it made you stretch yourself and wow. go into different genres. And, you know, otherwise you really do stay on this very common road. And I appreciated her for that. And we, you know, traveled together, did, uh, went to symposiums, uh, performed together and, um, I even went and I, like returned and choreographed for years on the company if I was in town. Oh, nice. So Dobson Dance Company. Very cool. All right. So this is a true or false question. Troubadour Cafe is a restaurant owned by Todd's family. And that is false. That is untrue. Like, I don't need to be a family that owns a restaurant because I like food. But <laughs> <laughs> Troubadour Cafe is a, was a show that I produced in 2012, a neo-vaudevillian romp um, and a fictitious cafe where I tried to just bring together, you know, once you're my age, in show business around this town, you around any town, you get to know everybody. So my goal was to create a, a kind of a variety show where I could, you know, in, in, invite my friends to come and perform. And there's so much talent in the Valley. There's so oh, much talent. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So I opened Troubadour, Troubadour Cafe was a show. I oversold the showroom at Casino Arizona after Showstoppers left because I pitched to them, why are you, you know, hiring a production company in Vegas to send you, you know, not the best dancers from Vegas when you have the best dancers in the world right here in the Valley and you have circus performers and you have singers and you have everything. Why keep doing that module when we could have local talent, which which creates local interest and uh, all of that. So I oversold the room. God bless Casino Arizona, but it didn't work out. Hopefully that uh, I hope to revive that show again sometime in the future. I know we've talked about that because I mean, there are so many amazing talents that just, yes. and now that events are happening again. So that's one of the things we keep cooking up. So maybe, yeah. may, maybe in the coming year, we'll actually make that happen. So that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. So question five, Todd was crowned Mr. Dance of Arizona. Yes. I was hoping it was Butter King. Butterface. <laughs> oh, let's not go down that road. This is a family good. show, Todd. My gosh. No, so no. So I was Mr. Dance of Arizona. There's an organization called Dance Masters, which is, you know, it's kind of a, like a pageant, national pageant, though. And 
you go to your regional competition and then finally, you know, you go to the nationals, hopefully. Um, and I was, I don't even know how old I was, but I went to this national competition with these incredible dancers, you know, probably 50 other amazing dancers from all over the country. Um, some of which have chore choreographed on So You Think You Can Dance. They're like old cronies now, but back then, like, wow, these guys are incredible. And um, and ended up placing like fourth nationally the, that year. That's pretty was, amazing. I mean, I out of all those amazing even, dancers, my gosh. I didn't know what I was even getting myself into, to be honest. I just, you know what I mean? I was from Arizona, like small town itis and didn't know where to kind of put myself nationally. So that was a great boost to my confidence. And uh, it was it was great just being around, putting yourself out of your little fishbowl into a, a, a national competition teaches you, you know, where you're at, you can gauge where you're at and if how far you want to go. Right. So well, and also, it also introduces you to folks who are equally as talented. True. And so you, I mean, I'm assuming you developed through that probably friendships. Oh, with like some of those even amazing... just learning thing, like the learning in that space, because we did a, you know, opening number together by some choreographer that none of us knew. Oh, and so okay. then you're like, okay, well, what was that? Oh, so wow. So really, so when you say pageant, that's you really it. mean, so it's kind of like Miss America where they come so, out and yes. they do the whole group thing. But right. That's really cool that you were all kind of put together. Right. And made to dance together for the opening. Right. Wow. So the great thing about the dance world is you meet people and you end up like so many of those dancers that were in this organization are choreographers in Vegas, choreographers on So You Think You Can Dance, um, Dancing with the Stars, um, dance competitions all over the country. Um, it's one big family. I can't explain it. Like, first of all, dancers are the workhorses of show business. So you get paid the least, you work the longest, you're bruised and battered. Mm -hmm. And, um, but there's no greater joy. There's birth, birth energy, you know, that even if you don't like somebody and you're dancing with them, like we're, we have this common goal, you know, your hair is in my mouth. There's sweat something like, I don't, I can't like hate you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a world that like, man, I miss it. I miss it so much. I miss backstage and uh, just the comedy, being able to be yourself, especially, you know, happy pride everybody. But, you know, you know, being, I always tease about like being, coming out and then finding the world of dance where I'm gay is like, so what? We all are. You know, oh, except for him, but he's cool. And, you know, and then, and, but then you go on stage and you're emulating all of this chivalry that doesn't even really exist, you know, <laughs> in the heterosexual world. But it, it, it just was so, such a wonderful nurturing experience. I can't explain it. It's like no, no other club I've joined or, church or anything like that because you know this was the era where people were dying um mm -hmm. dancers were dying that i respected and knew and all kinds of stuff so we helped each other through things and we 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 fed each other you know sometimes some of us were working and others weren't and we got each other through things so hi y'all so, okay, so if you were Mr. Dance, was there a Mrs. Dance or a Miss Dance? Yeah, my year it was uh, Tracy Zolke, whose name, it's Tracy Nolan is her name, married name now. We're still friends today. And I think she teach, I think she teach, she might be your teacher at Orange Theory. 
somewhere on the west side. Ah. She's awesome. Hi, Tracy. So then, so did you guys get sashes or? <laughs> Your sashes. <right. laughs> well, I'm going back to the whole pageant thing. I'm just like, I mean, so, or did you get like matching leotards? For I think we had sashes and maybe some kind of crown. Okay. But like, it was the kind of thing where you had been rehearsing every day, like into the late hours uh, for weeks and weeks. And you turn into this kind of robot where you're like, yeah, I just want to get through this competition. I don't really care about the sash. I want to eat. <laughs> I can't <laughs> oh wait to my just gosh, eat. I can only imagine the calories you were burning off. Oh yeah, just you turn into just a driven. A machine. You're a dance a machine. machine. I miss that so much. I mean, uh, projects here and there, but like, well, that was full body, full energy, full focus. Well, I mean, and I love that you're still in the dance world, maybe not dancing to the extent you were, but you're now giving that opportunity to other young folks to experience dance and I to do. learn and build community. I do. I get to teach. Um, you know what? I'll, most of my kids are now teaching. So they took all my jobs, came over here and took all my jobs. But <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I still, I teach at Ballet to Etudes in Mesa. I have the, had the honor to teach there for about 10 years for their intensive every summer. And there's such well-trained dancers that I don't have to kill my body when I'm giving them choreography. Uh, okay. They know my vocabulary and uh, it's awesome. And I also teach ballroom dance for fifth graders at um, Southwest Elementary School in Phoenix. It's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. 10 years of watching these kids transform. And they, the seventh and eighth grade teachers informed me that the kids do tango and swing at their dances. So. Oh, wow. So they're just doing it with you, but then they're actually taking this out to their school dances. As they age older. And That's so cool. I learned this program that I've adapted my own since, but probably telling it myself. But <laughs> I, I went to New York to learn from Pierre Dulane Dancing Classrooms, which is, is a great program. And it's perfect if you ever see Mad Hot Ballroom, which is uh, a documentary about the fellow that's doing exactly what I've been doing and in New York. And so I've adapted it more like more for Arizona and the kids that we have here. And, you know, I have one school. I'm hoping to get more schools because the kids love to compete. Oh, if you can just put them against each other, you get more out of them. I, I see why like, politicians do it. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> just joking. <laughs> and dance power hungry Todd. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Todd's mom is Dorothy Kathy or Joyce? And it is Joyce the Voice. Mm -hmm. And she does have an amazing voice. James Blink. Yes, she my mom and I are have always been a team. She's we're the two artists of the family. Everyone else is like an engineer, like military. IT, this and that. She's music. I'm dance. Um, we've even performed together a lot. We performed together in Jupiter Cafe. Um, she was an amazing soprano until she got did ballet fever when she was very young and it changed her range. So, um, so, so soprano, she was in opera? She probably would have been an opera singer. She was a big Marian Anderson fan, and wow. she's you know plays the piano, very very Renaissance lady. But you know she taught public school in the Roosevelt School District for forty sub years, and um, taught music to kids. And if you've been to church or karaoke. 
in the last decade <laughs> or the last, you know, 50 years, then you have crossed paths with the voice of Joyce. I love where the church or karaoke. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I'm the black sheep of the family that like gets her out, you know. Like, ah, okay. <laughs> Spread your wings a little. These people over here need to hear the message. So, exactly. Uh, my mom is just the best. I'm so happy that I that I still have her, and she's. We've been through a lot. We lost my aunt to COVID last year. I, you know, I wasn't sure they got sick at the same time, so it was pretty oh. devastating. And I'm just happy. I'm grateful to have her everywhere I go. I mean. It's, I flew my mom to Monte Carlo in 1996. She'd never been to Europe. We, and you know, this was such an amazing job that I had. I'm trying not to give away any other answers. Anyway, I, I, my mom sang in an open mic night in Monte Carlo. It just happened to be this <sighs> night where all of these people were there that were you know, celebrities and whatnot, along with my cast and everything. And no one was singing open mic. And the guys, like the grumpy guy on the piano, my mom's like, I'd like to sing. I'm like, okay, do, do you, does he even know any song that she knows? And so he, she's like, I want to sing Mustang Sally. So I go to this guy and he knows it. He's like, ah, I'll call you over when the time comes. And I'm thinking, oh, he's not going to ever us over finally he motions mom takes the mic and as always the room is just because she's like mustang salad and like the entire room is just transfixed and yelling and she's just an entertainer and uh of course she sings this place wants to hire her i'm like no it's my mom she's <laughs> gotta go home she doesn't live here and uh, and of course she's ready to go too. The night then she just got the night popping, and she's like, you know, I'm feeling tired. I think I want to go back to your place. <laughs> so I'm introduce her to Prince Albert, who's like, oh, is that your mother in there? Is it true? Like, mom, Prince Albert, Grace's son, you know, surreal moments. Wow, of my life. royalty. Surreal moments. Her, uh, Albert and Jean Claude Van Damme, like, because Jean Claude Van Damme was like, I want to meet her too, you know. <laughs> well, they're kind of fighting. And like, it's just, calm down. I like how people are pushing mom. you out of the way to meet your mom. I calm down. It's just my mom, you know. She's wonderful. Uh, that's a great Monte Carlo, especially as we get ready. I mean, we're going into the Jubilee. I mean, what a weekend it's going to be. Yeah. I've got friends that are getting ready for all kinds of festivities with the <laughs> Jubilee. You know, ugh, wish I could. I don't even have a passport anymore. Oh, <gasps> Todd. Know, why? Just, do you need me to? Do you need to take you and get a photo taken? Do. No, it's, it's not just too much to do. I just I, I'm going to kidnap you from work, and we're going to get a photo. <laughs> I've traveled so much. You know what I mean? For me. I'm enjoying staying, uh, staying at home and like okay. seeing what I missed and uh, stuff like that. So it's good. I'll travel again though. Okay. Very good. Just, just checking on making sure. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so. yeah. All right. So question seven, what museum is near Papago park? And it is D the Arizona heritage center. So Todd, where are you? I'm literally still at work. So <laughs> what you, if you only know the dancer side of me, what you may not know is that I'm a history nerd and I am a special projects coordinator and I work in guest experience at the Arizona Heritage Center, which is one of four museums. Um, flag, we have two flagship museums in the Arizona Historical Society and two historic properties, one in Flagstaff, one in Yuma. 
And the flagship museums are the Heritage Center in Tempe and the um, Arizona History Museum in Tucson. Um, please come visit me at the Heritage Center. We have a great Juneteenth um, program that I'm really jazzed about. Um, add me on Facebook. I'll let you know all about it. It's great. We're going to have great speakers. Um, lots of Arizona Black history stuff you didn't know. People that that you might want to meet because you know they they share some some tales that we may not know. And we'll have some amazing speakers like Neil Lester and Kareem oh, Neal, nice. Boki Hammonds. Oh. I've got everybody together for an amazing event because. I don't want Juneteenth to be about green beer and a sombrero, uh, and and just be tr you know be a trivial. So, so Todd, will your mom be there? Moment. My mom will be singing. Yes. Oh, your mom's gonna sing. Yes, she'll be singing, and I have dancers that are performing as well. Wow. Bruce Nelson is in the chat. Bruce will be there. Another historian. We're bringing everybody together. Very cool. Yes. All so, right, and so I know that's coming Center up. Center is great. This this photo is actually the um, breezeway at the front of our beautiful eighty five thousand square foot Smithsonian Affiliate Museum in Papago Park. That is a hidden gem. Everybody, every day, people walk through, going, "I never knew this was here." Right. And, um, you know, this was setting up for a Hindu wedding that we did in April. It was beautiful. So we do Oh weddings. my gosh, that would have been gorgeous. It was amazing. You know, um, the horse carriage and everything. It was great. And I get to just be a fly on the wall for a lot of this stuff. It's great. But um, we do proms, weddings. Um, we have corporate boardrooms. Um, where you can have meetings, all kinds of events. So if you're planning an event and you want to need a beautiful venue, come and find me. Indeed. Oops. All right. So question eight, which uh -huh. iconic Valley restaurant opened its doors in 1988? And it is B, AZ88. <laughs> yes. So Todd, have you ever been there? Um, I've been there a few times. <laughs> I love when I walk in with you, it's like everyone's like, oh hi Todd. Hi Todd. <laughs> hi Todd. Hi Todd. So the like the manager there now, Paul. If you know Paul, I'm I I trained Paul in like 2001 or something like that. Oh yes. AZ88 has been a part of my a part of my life for many, many years. Some of you, I may have waited on you there. That might be how I know you. Um, but I moved away and I came back and I moved away and I came back and I moved away and I came back. And um, it's such a home away from home that you find me there socially. From time <laughs> to time. So, yes, AZ88, it's an institution. If you've not been there, it's in this uh, Scottsdale Mall in the Civic Center near the Arizona, or sorry, the uh, Scottsdale Center for the Arts and the Scottsdale Contemporary Art Museum. And they've got incredible martinis and bar food and ambiance and every year and Christmas tree that could be I was going to say, and every year they always do an amazing Christmas tree that they don't, re they don't recreate. It's like every year is a brand new thing. And it could be made out of like, shoes or barbie heads car parts feathers <laughs> it's an it's an incredible place and carl cop um he also owns hanny's downtown which was a department store a men's department store he's all just done amazing projects over the years he also owns uh elsa's on the park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So if you're ever uh, in Milwaukee, okay. hit up Elsa's. Well, I also love that Bruce um, shared another event going on in Washington Park. Yes. So the Matriarchs of Washington Park event. 
I actually got to paint paintings of some of the matriarchs. Um, a few artists got together to um, paint these matriarchs that Bruce has chosen, one of which was my grandmother. They're black mid-century women from this, you know, little piece of segre segregated mesa that did outstanding things um, in history for the community, um, for the church. And it's been an honor, you know, definitely come check that out. The link is in the comments. Indeed. Thank you, Bruce, for sharing that. All right. So which casino was, was Jewish mobster Gus Breenbaum not involved with? And so that was the MGM Grand because the other ones he actually helped build and create the Las Vegas that then grew into what could have the MGM Grand. The MGM Grand. Just the, I mean, just uh, when I, when I look at this, I think of like how far you have to walk to do things. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, I'm always, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, why? I mean, it's, they've got conveyor belts that like, oh my gosh. And so they, yeah, when you're an employee, like you got to park like way out there to come into work and then do your show and then walk your sore legs back out to your car. But um, it was an honor to be in FX with Michael Crawford in the original cast of that. Oh, and, wow. 1995 people came from all over the world to audition and it was great i got to be one of those front dancers and uh god the first day they were like okay your circus training is on tuesday i'm like what what did she say circus because miss stare was down the road the first Cirque du Soleil oh show. right yeah Meanwhile, we had been doing showcases with all kinds of weird circus stuff to try to sell shows for years. But they were like, America's not you know, ready for that. Cirque du Soleil comes in and kaboom. But, and takes um, over Las Vegas pretty much. So, you know, this show had to come in. It had a fire-breathing dragon that came out over the audience. And uh, Michael Crawford, you know, come on. Right. And... Um, 70 dancers oh my god people. yeah like three floors of stage like this mountain set um i think we were behind opening like we were still stopping the show after we opened for a couple of months for technical that's how big this show was uh but i mean talent 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 so much talent and friends to this day, so many of those performers. All right, so the MGM Grand, were mm -hmm. there any other hotels that you performed at? Yes, I moved there to open the show at Luxor. It was called, oh. Winds, it was called Winds of the Gods. And oh, I, appropriate I, for in a, in a casino that looks like a pyramid. Exactly. So this was like, you know, 50 dancers in an arena. We had to learn to dance in sand, so... The costumes were great. Like you were just half naked the whole time, like with uh, Pharaoh's army costumes and thieves and moccasins. And we had to learn to crack bull whips like on time with choreography. We had full speed chariot races, um, a wow. baby, an elephant, a giraffe, camels, zebras, and just amazing dancers. And uh, one of the cool things uh, is the choreographer, Jean-Pierre Rejouri, worked with Josephine Baker. And oh. so I, I followed him. I'd worked in shows for him back east. And he was just kind of one day in New York, or, oh, yeah, they're building a pyramid in Vegas. And, you know, you have the job if you want it. But you have to go to the audition. But, you, know, you have it. I'm like, what? Pyramid? What? Do you, what? Like, go back. And he's... So the next thing I knew, we were walking, you know, we're in the parking lot, like four or five of us that had moved from the East Coast into some little apartment 
complex on Charleston and Durango now, which was the end of town. Sounds and great, Naomi Malone. Yes. So that movie came out after after we had moved out there. This, in fact, when Showgirls came out, we were like, "There's some storylines in that movie that I feel like." <laughs> Some people should feel attacked about, but I'm not sure. But yeah, it was literally, it was great. It was, and I mean, we walked up to Luxor and there's this dark ramp down the back of it because the showroom, of course, is in the bottom, the basement. And you had to walk down this dark, we heard all of these things like, I heard someone fell and, you know, during the the, uh, construction and, you hear all this stuff, and now here we are walking down underneath it into the uh, showroom. And but man, that's one of my. I never had to smile once in this show. It was great. It's like all like hieroglyphics and you know, angst. Wow! <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> Indeed. All right. So which celebrities has Todd worked with? Quincy Jones. Yes. And actually, the answer to this question was all of the above. I guess I didn't specify that. I just had the picture of Quincy Jones. Ah, okay. So it was (laughs) Sheila E. Yes, Um, it was all of them. I've worked with all of them. Now, my favorite was Quincy Jones. And why was Quincy your favorite? Quincy Jones, just, I mean, first of all, brilliance. Like, spanning decades and genre. And when I met him, it was in Monte Carlo, working, you know, setting up for uh, to work with him. We had the music ahead of time. So I'm rehearsing the dancers on this beautiful stage in this white tablecloth cliff hanging showroom where the ceiling opened to the sky. And in the back, here comes, you know, Quincy Jones and Entourage and everybody. I'm like, make it look good, guys. We bang it out. I give her, I, everyone takes five and I kind of like, make myself small and go over to this side of the stage and kind of stretch and sitting on the floor. I remember I was on the floor, like laying down or in the splits or something ridiculous. And I look up and Quincy Jones is like running down the aisle, like running towards the stage. Like I'm like, is something wrong? Right. Like he needs the bathroom. What, what, so he's running and he like leaps onto the stage and it looks like he's running over to me. And there he is, like he's like, boy, you show sure can dance, can't you? You know, you show sure can dance, can't you? Woo-hoo, where are you from? And he's like crouching down. I'm like, stop that, get up, you know. It was so amazing. He was just a regular old black folks with me. And I loved it. I loved it. That's he, great. Yeah, it just felt not pretentious in the least, not, you know, he celebrated my talent. Like, it's, it's mind-blowing than when we met, you know? Right. So, great guy, really nice. So what about, like, some of the other celebrities? I mean, you had, like, Sheila E., Phil Collins. Yeah, so Sheila E. was my first tour. Like on the East Coast, so this would have been 1990, and she, she, her Tito Puente and Pete Escovedo, her father. So this was like a crazy percussion um, tour, you know, and a little of the print stuff. You know, I was like, hey, where's the lingerie? Like, <laughs> she was, she's like, why is she wearing like silk suits and stuff? Like, what is this? But, you know, very professional tour. And uh, she was fantastic. But this was like a step up above kind of a commercial concert because her father and learning the legacy and the family dynamic of playing percussion and getting to dance to that was just, wow. 
mind blowing. Well, and um, as you're talking about kind of performing all over the country and the world, I love that we have Alex who's watching from Acapulco. Alex. Indeed. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I was there. <laughs> hey, Alex. That's great. Yes. So, Todd, so, okay, so you worked with these celebrities. So, who is this beautiful woman in this photo with you? Oh, that is Casey. So, Casey, I did um, cruise ships for five years for Royal Caribbean. Not only did I do cruise ships, but I got to bring out these brand new, bigger than ever. Every Like, they're always the period where they were trying to make bigger ships. I think they're still doing that. And... I got to be part of this build uh, build out team that brought out brand new cruise ships. You built living on Miami beach, rehearsing and then flying to Finland and living in a <laughs> shipyard, weird life. And then, you know, several, two weeks of Atlantic crossing and all of that while you're trying to rehearse. And it was amazing. So, um, when my friend Casey was about 21, she, uh, we were in the same show and she became kind of like a, my little sister, She's an incredibly talented person. She has a twin sister named Stacy, who's uh, a singer. And the cool thing about them is that they were in Vegas. After I retired, I, you know, you have to have time for the internet to take over and handheld devices and Facebook to happen. And then you find people. Oh yeah, that's where you've been. And so they were in a show called Peep Show in Las Vegas with Holly Madison, which what she was a playmate. Yeah. So super, super beautiful, fantastic dancey show. And, uh, they were both in that that show, and Casey is, we're still close. So that's really cool. Now, one of the things I think is cool is so not only Alex but Mary Carmen is also watching from Acapulco. Who oh, knew? We, we have such an international crowd today. Oh my god! Maybe I do need that passport. Exactly. <laughs> I am like we're so cosmopolitan today. My gosh, I would have I would have dressed up a bit more if I had known. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing they always like to ask is as we wind down trivia is how did you do yeah. now it's not so important i think how many you got right or wrong but oh my gosh todd you gave some amazing stories uh it's been a it's been a a wild ride it's been a wild ride Indeed. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm looking so forward to then um, the event coming up in just a couple of weeks. Yep. Yep. With Juneteenth. That's going to be an amazing adventure. Yes. And we've got, we're going to have great food. We want a, a special thanks to SRP and a bunch of our other sponsors. Um, could, wouldn't so, have been able to do this without some help. So. So do people have to register for this? It's, it'd be nice for you to register so that I can make sure there's enough food and all of that. Um, but in the chance that you don't know, just please come 2.30. Very good. Bring your dad. It's Father's Day, I know, but bring him. It'll be a it'll be a day worth spent. I have no doubt. We'll make sure of it. I mean, some amazing folks are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So it will be a great afternoon, and yeah. celebrating so much Arizona history and beyond. Right, with us growing up, with everybody, you know, every day in this museum, people have just moved here. They they come in and they've just. We need to know where we've moved to. What is the history here? Right. Um, and, you know, I wish local people did that. You know, we, uh, we leave our houses and we go outside here when it's nice. 
or we stay at home and watch the History Channel, you guys come to the Arizona Heritage Center. You've got everything that happened during World War II. You've got civil rights section, you've got a mineral collection, um, an exhibit about broadcast at the moment. Called oh, I was, I was gonna ask what's a special exhibit going on? Cause I yeah, haven't been there in a while. We feature it on, um, on air exhibits about broadcasting in Arizona that highlights Mary Jo West, my uncle Bob Petty, who started here, even though you may recognize his name from Chicago, um, the ABC affiliate there where he was worked for 32 years. But um, uh, we have a faux news desk that we hope that you'll come in and do some TikToks or what not from and hashtag us on. We built that for you. Come down and have oh, some Oh, I should come and do a little promo for happy hour there. Yes, please. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. And <laughs> because of you and your connection to Mary Jo West, I've been chatting with her about getting her on happy hour. Awesome. You yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you can like walk with her through the airport or something too. So I mean, well, because I know, well, I know she has to work every Thursday night, so we can actually record it in advance. So, right. so yeah, so I'm excited just to kind of hear her story of what it was like to be in broadcasting. Yes, as really the first woman in Arizona. And she's such a wonderful person, such a wonderful person. She's been close to my family for years, and uh, she deserves that spotlight indeed oh my gosh todd thank you so much for being here on happy hour i'm delighted my friend so delighted. now I, I want you to, so okay so if people are thinking well you know he's leaving i should just go ahead and get off so todd why should they stick around because we're going to show a little video at the very end that features you oh the reason that you should stick around is uh, okay you know, when you think about pride, uh, here we are celebrating pride and here we are still not able to comfortably go to Target because somebody is making threats on social media that they want to target us in Target this year. And it's 2022. We still have work to do in our community, but uh, this video is from 2012 when I decided I needed to put something together for the protesters that greet us outside of Pride every year with uh, their banners and their kind of mean comments through the bullhorn. So this was a special uh, thing I put together that has, I don't think you can call it viral, but I'm pretty impressed with how many views it's been. And it's pretty profound. I, I hope that you'll watch and absorb the whole thing. Indeed. And get, get to the end. Very good. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you. And I will see you soon. Okay, my friend. Thanks everybody, we'll see you later. Bye. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was so wonderful. Todd, thank you so much for coming on. And so we're doing From the Vault. Now, so it's going to be, you know, if you're from the Valley, you probably have heard of Big Surf. You may or may not be aware of some of the history and the fact that it's been sold and is, as we speak, being torn down and dismantled. Oh my gosh. So it first opened up in 1969. Um, Phil Dexter actually invented the how do you make the wave machine? And so he did that and he wanted to open something. And so he wound up basically writing a letter to Clairol. Now, supposedly they did TV spots and some print ads. So I'm always looking out for those. If anyone has any leads on those print or commercials, would love to see them. Have found nothing from Clairol even mentioning this at all. But it was built and, and opened its doors in 69. 
and really became a phenomenon. I mean, now there's wave parks all over the globe. This was really the first one creating that, that technology. And you had people coming from all over, people that were spending their entire days surfing. Now, I hear it was different than natural waves, but still people love to do it because you could surf in the middle of the desert. And it was such a phenomenon because so they not only did surf, but they had sand. They also did music. They brought in DJs. They brought in all kinds of music groups like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sting, Blue Oyster Cult, Stevie Wonder. It's been featured in Life Magazine, Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, all these places. It also is a historic mechanical engineering landmark because of the fact it was the first wave park creating the technology. And so it actually did receive a landmark status, which I think is really cool. And so as it's being dismantled, the property has been sold, um, contents have been sold. I sure hope that whatever goes into this space does have something that connects us back to the history of Big Surf. So people don't think, oh, nothing was here before this building. So would love to see that. Now, now you'll see why I always love to do a shout out and say, you know, hey, if you're watching on Facebook, you really need to click on that share button because where else are you going to hear some of these stories? Next week, we have my friend Johnny, um, and he is going to be talking about kind of logos and graphic art history of Arizona which that's going to be a lot of fun. We've been talking about doing this for quite a while, so I'm glad it's finally happening. And so always remember, you can give a shout out either in the chat or through social media because I love to hear from folks. In fact, that's actually where some of my best stories come from and to share with you all. So I always love to give a shout out to Chris and Cole who did that great video to begin with. And always PJ, you know, Another great cocktail that we can share. You can go to AZ88s or Hanny's and get one of your very own. And so as we get ready to say goodnight, I do indeed. I'm going to click on playing that flash mob. It's about three minutes long, so please stick around. It's well worth it. All right, everybody, I will see you here. Same bat time, same bat channels next week. Have a great night. It's all going to be over one day, hobo. It's all going to be over. One day God's going to put you in hell. Yeah, you. You. Yeah, I'm judging you. You're not hard to judge. I'm judging you. Yes, I am. All these beautiful people out here. I love you guys. And gals. And transgenders. And hydrians. That's why. Yeah, let's straight you off. Happy pride. Are you ready, baby? You're beautiful, too. All right. Let's do this. Drop the music. Yeah, drop the music.
you were born this way. You were born this way, baby. Tell me who you are. My name is Queen B, and I'm, I'm here at the Pride Festival, so I'm showing my support, showing the love. Um, we were just one of the ladies, me and my girlfriend, we just got kicked out of a restaurant for being gay, and, and, and race, and everything, being women, being black, being gay, being everything. And today, we're out here showing everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, just love yourself. I'm Queen B, and I love all of you. I thought the way you guys handled that, a little flash mob was wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah you can protest and stand there. They stopped what they were doing. They had to pay attention because all we're doing is showing love. That's it. Happy Pride. Thank you. Happy